Hey everyone, this is another hardware news recap for the last week in the computer hardware industry. We've got a lot of good items for today, including just a, a teaser of some Meltdown Inspector coverage we have coming up within the next couple days. We decided to reach out to some of the initial researchers who found the Meltdown Inspector exploits and ask them a couple of questions, demystify some of the more confusing elements and uh, debunk some of the myths that have arisen from the ashes of the insanity uh, as everyone has panicked about these bugs. So that'll be a really good content piece. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be in the same tune as the RAM and the GPU research pieces. That's coming up soon. Samsung's got GDDR6 news for us. AMD has hired a basically a replacement for Raja Kadori and a, a counterpart along with the replacement. And AMD's also killed off their primitive shader function in most reasonable capacity. Uh, we spoke to Micro Center a bit. And then uh, Microsoft Telemetry News, what's new, and a Silverstone cooler. So all that and more for this week. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gamers Nexus Patreon and our Patreon backers. If you want to help us out directly, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, where we have access to a Patreon-only Discord where you can chat with the GN team, or you can support us at $5 or higher and get access to behind-the-scenes videos as we release them once or twice a month. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for a quick preview of what's going on for the site this week, again, that Meltdown Spectre piece is coming up. That's our big research piece right now. We've spoken with a couple of different research and security firms that discovered the initial exploit and basically emailed them a set of questions to say, can you clarify this for us? Which in many cases was, can you clarify does Spectre require physical access to the computer? Because that was something we'd seen printed by a lot of comments and I genuinely didn't know. So we asked them and they gave us some answers on that. We asked about uh, what they thought was overlooked with Spectre and Meltdown. So out of all the media blitz and all the consumer reports and things like that, what's something that everyone has failed to mention? And then on the flip side of that, what is something that's either blown out of proportion or just straight false? So lots of cool stuff coming up for that. Uh, also, we have a probably article only benchmark of the Xbox One X Dragon Ball Fighter Z or whatever that game is called. It just showed up. Uh, Namco Bandai had us on their media list from years and years ago when we did more games coverage. So we're going to benchmark that and we'll put that in just an article on the website if you're curious about the frame rate. But let's get into the hardware news here. Samsung has GDDR6 information and Samsung revealed somewhat recently that they entered mass production with the industry's first GDDR6 memory, which will of course be used on future graphics cards, likely sooner than you might think. Uh, this is announced in addition to using GDDR6 for things like AI, automotive, uh, VR was an interesting side note in there, as well as AR, augmented reality, and also network systems. So uh, gamers, for the most part, are just going to be looking forward to GPUs, but there's a whole lot of other stuff in the ecosystem. Samsung's first GDDR6 ICs will be available in 16 gigabit densities, offering 18 gigabits per second per pin transfer rate and up to 72 gigabytes per second of bandwidth per chip. Samsung's GDDR6 speeds are more than double that of GDDR5's 8 gigabit per second and higher than G5X memory at up to 11 gigabits per second. The new memory is built on Samsung's 10 nanometer class technology, class here referring to anything between 10 and 19 nanometers, stretching it a bit. We can assume that Samsung isn't at 10 nanometers yet with GDDR6, otherwise they would unambiguously acknowledge that achievement. Still, according to Samsung, 10 nanometer class technology brings about a 30% productivity increase, presumably compared to 20 nanometer manufacturing, and that productivity increase probably translates to more chips per wafer. Additionally, Samsung has noted the voltages of these chips will be down to 1.35 volts operating for the voltage from 1.55 previously required for GDDR5 or G5X. This means higher or better efficiency. You have less heat to dissipate and worry about, which is particularly important if you're sharing cold plates with things. And Samsung doesn't really elaborate on this. They just point to improved circuit design and that's about it. Uh, they also made no mention of when GDDR6 will ship globally or commercially, but they've basically touted that they will have it sometime in 2018 and it's in production. 
So Samsung is seemingly on schedule here, and we can reasonably assume that Samsung's clients are planning products with the solution already, which would include the GPU makers. AMD announced its hiring of two new senior members for the Radeon Technology Group, or RTG, filling in for the role left behind by Raja Kadori, who departed for Intel not too long ago. The two new hires are Mike Rayfield, SVP and General Manager of AMD RTG, and David Wayne, SVP of Engineering for RTG. David Wayne's roles will pertain entirely to architecture and hardware development of future AMD GPUs, while Rayfield will handle overall direction, strategy, and business development. Mike Rayfield has been in the industry since about 1983. His work experience includes 16 years as Director of Sales at Texas Instruments, two years at Cisco for business development, right around the dot-com boom, seven years at NVIDIA's mobile division as a general manager, and five years at Micron as a general manager of the mobile unit. David Wayne's history, the engineer of the two, dates back to the beginning of consumer graphics, including a history as a design manager at SGI, which is the company from which Jensen Huang later defected to form NVIDIA. Wayne also worked his way up from engineering manager at ATI to engineering director to senior director and stayed at ATI and AMD from 2000 to 2012, later leaving for Synaptics in 2012 through present. Relating to AMD's RTG group, the user Mark Souter on 3dcenter.org posted some information from an AMD breakout conference a couple weeks ago that noted that AMD apparently intends to kill its implicit primitive shader functions, which was supposed to be a major feature of the Vega architecture, primarily RX Vega. It is a mostly gaming targeted function. So uh, to bring everyone up to speed on what that means, primitive shaders are something we talked about when we reviewed Vega Frontier Edition and then later RX Vega. And when everyone was saying wait for drivers, they were basically saying wait for the primitive shader function, the implicit primitive shader function to be functional. Uh, and that's because the primitive shader function is supposed to somewhat intelligently discard primitives, which would be things like geometry, triangles, stuff like that. And we have a pretty long interview with Mike Mantor of AMD talking about what the plans were for that function. Those will probably never come to be at this point. So this was done by combining the vertex and geometry shader functions. AMD at times claimed a 2x increase in speed for vertex shader code execution enabled by this function. And now what's happening is the implicit part of the primitive shader functionality is being removed, it looks like. And uh, instead they will leave an explicit shader path. So if a game developer explicitly supports it, meaning the game developer manually writes code to leverage the primitive shader functionality that was discussed, at launch, then it will work, but there's no implied functionality. It requires someone to sit down and write the code for it. Now, this would be okay, except AMD's Vega market share is basically zero. And if there's no market share to speak of for a an architecture, which presently spans two devices, why would you code for it as a game developer? There's so much more you could spend your time on. So uh, it's unfortunate. Part of that is because Vega had a very high cost to make and still has a high cost to make, and it's hard for them to make money on it. Part of it's because it's in high demand by miners, and part of it's just global shortage of supply or increase in cost for memory and things like that. So Vega has not really saturated the market enough, in our opinion, to get significant development support for this functionality from game developers. Uh, however, it's possible that a company like id, for example, with Doom, or perhaps with Wolfenstein, or any of those other games that have been advancing the low-level API front, maybe one of them will do something with explicit primitive shader or discard. Uh, but for now, it's, it's looking like that's not really going to be the case. Next news item, Micro Center. We complained a lot about them and their prices in our, I think, Ask GN video. So, got some news on that front. Uh, Micro Center did notify us and confirmed that they are working to inform all of their sales associates of their own sales programs. So hopefully next time we or anyone else goes in the store and asks about the program for building your own system discounts, they should be up to speed because we knew it existed. We asked about it, but I mean, it was obviously a disconnect where not every employee in the store knows the rules. So 
That's what happens when you have retail stores with lots of employees. Not everyone's up to speed. It sounds like they're, they're doubling down on that effort to get everyone up to speed and all the sales associates on the floor. Uh, if you encounter a micro center store that doesn't know what the build your own computer discount is, you can tell them this. Per micro center's own website, uh, video cards as part of this effort to get them into the hands of gamers, video cards are limited to one per household, not person. Uh, they do not offer price matching, apparently unless they're matching in an upward direction. And uh, they do, however, offer the coupon if you can get an associate who understands that, where if you spend $700 uh, and purchase a processor and other components that push you to 700. So CPU, motherboard, RAM, for example, gets you there quickly. Spend 700 bucks, buy a CPU uh, and whatever else is required to get there. And then they discount the GPU back towards MSRP. So uh, that's what Micro Center has told us. Hopefully you're able to, to take advantage of that. You still will need to go in there and ask the representatives when the shipments come in though, because from what I've been told, Micro Center is basically clearing their GPU inventory within an hour of getting it. So uh, even with that news, you need to go make friends with someone who works there and ask them when the shipments come in, because otherwise you're not going to get one most likely, unless you camp in front of the store at 9 a.m. when they open. Uh, so our, our thanks to Micro Center for hopefully correcting that. If they can get everyone on the same page, it sounds like, I guess, like, a 50% decent solution. There's not a lot they can do in, in all fairness, because I mean, demand is high, the supply is low, and cost for GPU manufacturing has gone up. So not a lot that can be done anyway. In Microsoft telemetry news, a Windows Diagnostic Data Viewer has been added to the next Windows 10 release. Windows insiders will get early access to this, and Microsoft describes this as part of their commitment to, quote, be fully transparent on the diagnostic data collected from your Windows devices, how it is used, and to provide you with increased control over that data. Remember that earlier, Microsoft actually released a special telemetry-free version of Windows 10 for the China market, and for the US and most of the rest of the world, there's still all the telemetry in there. Now they're letting you see what data they're collecting on your usage although we're unclear on whether you can toggle any of that. It doesn't sound like you can. Maybe some of it you can because they do say increase the control over that data. Uh, but either way, you'll be able to see what they're spying on you about. So that's cool, I guess. Uh, common data is primarily being reported. This will include operating system's name, version, device ID, device class, diagnostic level selection, uh, crash logs, any other failure logs, event viewer type of information. Uh, additionally, device connectivity and configuration, uh, device properties and capabilities, preferences and settings, peripherals, device network information, product and service performance data uh, that show the device health, performance and reliability data, movie, con wow, mo this, was, this note was added by Patrick, I didn't know about this one, movie consumption functionality on the device and device file queries, and uh, important to note, that the functionality is not intended to capture user viewing or listening habits, but I guess just the aggregate telemetry pertaining to those things. Product and service usage data is also being looked at, including details logged from usage of the device, operating system applications and services, and then software setup and inventory, such as all installed applications, install history application, install history, Windows update history, device update information, and so forth. So uh, the good news is now you can see all of those things that they're pulling for uh, allegedly improvement of the operating system. But I mean, you can basically get Windows 10 for free now, and there's a reason for that. They're making their money somewhere. Uh, last one here, Silverstone's got a new Argon series cooler. We've actually historically liked their Argon coolers, and they've done pretty well in our testing. This one, however, is a low profile cooler. It is the Argon AR11, and it sits low to the socket. It supports a 95 watt TDP or greater, depending on case airflow. And it's using a 92 millimeter fan that's only 15 millimeters thick that spins at 1200 to 3000 RPM and moves 55.8 or so CFM of air at 44.5 decibels when it's maxed out. Uh, dimensions, it's 
about the full size you can get before exiting the clearance zones, 97 by 94 by 47 millimeters. And it's got four six millimeter heat pipes with aluminum fins for the fin stack and then a fan on top of it. Price is TBD. But if you like small form factor PCs, it does look like a promising cooler. So that's all for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one if you'd prefer to help us that way. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.